Hey guys, JC here, and we are in Middle-earth once again with Return to Moria, a game I've been looking forward to for ages because I used to be obsessed with survival games on PC, for example, Ark and Valheim. This was before I got hooked back into being a casual on the PlayStation. Return to Moria is a survival game that takes a lot of the best mechanics from other games of the same genre, and fits them into a world of Tolkien, fantasy, and lore. The biggest comparison is definitely Valheim. Loads of the same mechanics and gameplay loops are seen here, which is great. The game hasn't had the best reviews so far, and there's definitely some issues and an indie game vibe about it, but if you're a fan of Tolkien's work or just the Lord of the Rings or Hobbit movies, you will most probably love this game. The devs are already updating the game, we just had a brilliant inventory and storage update, an improved ending and loads more. Lots of the item spawns need fixing for achievement or trophy's sake though. There are 27 achievements to earn, 28 trophies on PlayStation because of the Platinum, and most of them are story related or crafting related. I did all of this solo, but I'm sure eventually some people will have chests stacked with materials so that their friends can join and craft everything needed for achievements really quickly. But unfortunately for me, I had no one to enjoy this game with. Sad times. <laughs> My journey started off outside of Moria, and after mining too aggressively, we fall into the mines and become isolated from Lord Gimli's company outside. We have our bird friend Eric to aid us and tell us what to do, and there's also a helpful guide you can access if you ever feel lost. There are four main areas in the game, each with different biomes. We start in the western halls, then we journey to the lower depths, end up in Dwarodelf, near Balin's tomb, and then finally delve deep to the Balrog's lair in Barazinbar. The game is procedurally generated, but many areas are linear for each player because you are also following a story, and the huge task of rebuilding Moria, clearing out monsters, and then reaching the exit on the other side, over the famous bridge of Khazad Doom. I started off first, of course, with customising my dwarf. I'm glad there's so many face tattoo options, because that made me feel super included. Once my dwarf and world were created, we have our brief introduction to the story and the explanation of how we ended up trapped and alone in the dark depths of Moria. Once down in the deeps of khazad Doom, we can still communicate with the dwarves outside through Arik, our feathered guide. Arik will turn up during story progression so that you know you're on the right track. After gathering some materials from the ground and making a makeshift torch and pickaxe, the journey through Moria was well underway, as I made my way through dirt and stone to an abandoned dwarven camp, which I made into my first home of my playthrough. After gearing up a bit and getting myself settled into the game, it was time to venture onwards, and going into this next area gave me my first achievement. I came across the Elven Quarter, a surprise even to the dwarves that this area is in Moria, a very useful area for farming elven wood, lemur spread ingredients, and hide from the animals here. The Epic Games overlay isn't great, so this achievement was really delayed. It's like being back on PS3. There are many little camps scattered around the place that you can repair as you go, so I made a miniature base at this one so I could craft some upgrades because I had found iron in this area, and I needed a steel pickaxe to progress down into the mines. Crafting this baby earned me my next achievement. And then another one straight after for finishing off my set of Iron Hills armor. I was geared up to kick some ass. And whilst I was jotting down the time of the achievement popping, I was attacked by some unpleasant visitors. This happens mostly at night time, enemies randomly spawn and will patrol and sniff you out. With my new trusty steel pickaxe equipped, I could make it through the compact dirt blocking my way and truly enter the famous Mines of Moria. <laughs> the Mines of Moria! I hope you lead to Dwarodelf and some treasures along the way. Another achievement earned for making progress through this fourth age story. Once I had climbed and built my way down the mines, I found another outpost left by Balin's company years prior. This became my first proper base of the game. I really decked this area out and I could expand it for all my spelunking needs, even building a farm here later. And these map stones here allow you to fast travel to other map stones you found or built. Although you do receive a penalty to your stamina and hunger, map stones are so damn useful. I fought my way through clusters of goblins to mine all that I needed to advance, eventually stopping at this area's broken statues, because every time you rebuild the statues, you gain new recipes for armor and weapons, so repairing the statues is a must. After expanding my presence by placing map stones at essential forges and other important places, it was time to deal with this area's boss, a descendant of the white orc Azog, who you may remember from The Hobbit. I had to take him down and take all of his treasure to then progress deeper into Moria. Once I had slain this hulking orc, I earned another achievement. It was time to head home with my loot and the precious black diamonds that high level orcs drop. These diamonds were needed to repair the mine hoist which would open up the crystal descent to me so that I could delve downwards into the lower depths area. Before that though, I needed to gear myself up again. I crafted the full Erebor set which earned me the covered head to toe achievement. 
Heading down to the lower depths was extremely perilous. I had to make use of many platforms and rope ladders to make sure I didn't fall to my death or land in the shadow curse. Once I'd eventually made my way down to the bottom, I was greeted with a map stone that I could repair. Phew, checkpoint reached. I did a bit of exploring down here and the enemies were a lot tougher, so upgrades were needed straight away. But I needed a stronger pickaxe to mine many things in this area, so for now I just marked some places on my map to return to later. But I did stumble across a statue of Durin. When you repair these glorious statues, you can sing at them to completely restore your health and energy and receive a really strong buff too. The world was fair, the mountains tall, in Ah, it's just so beautiful. And a fun fact, the singing in this game is done by the same guys that did the sea shanties in my favourite game, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. They've done an amazing job in Return to Moria as well. And as you can see, I've now discovered the lower deeps properly, so now I'm awaiting the To the Mountains Roots achievement. My main objective for this area is to cross an underground lake so that I can repair a pumping station. This would lower the water level in an area I needed to reach next. I can now craft piers using the new wood in this area, making it seemingly easy to cross the water. As a fan, I could see this coming a mile away because you can actually hear him making noises in this whole biome. But it was brilliant nonetheless. We see an old friend. The watcher in the water comes splashing out of the deeps and our bow is absolutely useless against him. After he completely annihilates my platforms and piers, I knew that I had to come back to him with a stronger weapon later. So I crafted myself a crossbow with the new materials I found down here and he was a piece of cake to defeat. Each time he dives under the water, more orcs and goblins spawn though, which can be tricky, especially when you're solo. And we get a nice little fellowship reference afterwards too. I wonder if it's the same watcher that attacked the fellowship. Once I had defeated the watcher, the way was clear for me to repair the pumps and move on to the next forge, the Belagost Forge. Making it this far meant I could craft myself an entire Belagost set, feel stronger, and also grab the decked out achievement, which struggled to pop because epic games. Grrr. I'll just have to bring up the other way for these ones instead. It was time to make my way to Dwaradelf now and search for Durin's forge to rebuild his axe. I fought my way through Arachnophobia, visited the Tomb of the Kings, then repaired the Eastern Stairs to make my way back up through Moria. I passed Barlin's tomb as well and saw the aftermath of the battle that the Fellowship had with goblins and a cave troll. They have a cave troll. Eventually I reached the chamber of Mazar Bull, where I could set up an outpost, and then finally the achievement popped for reaching Dwaradelf, the third of four main areas. I paid my respects to Gandalf the Grey after finding his hat on the Eastern Stair, and then I battled my way through Dwaradelf against my toughest foes yet, the Uruks. This area was definitely the hardest challenge I'd faced. Swarms of Orcs and Uruks can easily overwhelm you, and I died quite a lot. That's why it's good to be tactical about where you make bases and place map stones. And during my downtime, whilst I gathered ingredients for food and more materials for better weapons and armor, I finished off crafting all weapons available since the lower deeps for the achievement Deeps Weapon Craft. While I was at it, I went back to my main base in the lower deeps. This base remained my home for the entire playthrough. Anyway, I crafted all of the weapons available back at the Elven Forge, thus earning myself a very laggy achievement, a Region Weapon Craft. More crafting ensued as I noticed I could also craft the last rare helmet for an achievement. These recipes were found in special chests that you open with carvings that you find scattered all around the place. These carvings also prevent you from getting achievements because they don't always spawn correctly in your world, at the time of these recordings anyway. But at least I managed to get all rare helmets made at the forge for the achievement. Next I decided to craft all of the non-story related masterworks. A masterwork is an item that can be equipped in your last slot and they are extremely powerful in different ways. The drawback is that you can only equip one at a time and you also cannot store them, so I recommend dropping them off in your base and coming to craft a different one. Drop it off again, rinse and repeat. For crafting all of them though, I received another achievement. I found myself in the desolation area of Dwaradelf, fighting to survive against armored trolls and Uruks, but I was extremely close to reaching Durin's forge at long last. It was time to ascend to the next level by crafting Durin's axe 
and a new set of gear. But in my way, sitting upon a throne was an Olog High that has now named himself the Troll King. You may remember the Olog High from the Shadow of War game, so it's nice that they involved an Olog in Return to Moria. I took the high ground and sniped him from above for an easy kill. He even bugged out and stopped attacking me, but the Troll King made for an easy fight using ranged attacks anyway. Once the Troll King was put down for disrespecting Durin, I earned myself a lovely achievement, and access to Durin's forge at last. After finding all five pieces of Durin's axe throughout my journey so far, I could now finally craft this beauty. It's actually a masterwork pickaxe. The dwarves thought it was a weapon all this time. And this pickaxe now allows me to break down barriers made of shadow and rock. For crafting Durin's axe, I was also awarded the Baruch Khazad achievement. Now I could progress even further into Moria, and also into the fourth and final area, so far that the game has to offer, Barazinbar. I stumbled across the crossroads, a familiar place from the Fellowship of the Ring movie, and for reaching this place I received a brilliantly named achievement. I have no memory of this place. I took one of the paths leading off from the crossroads which took me to Cruel Caradras, also known as the Angry Caves, where the ceiling is always trying to fall on your head. Just for entering this area I was awarded another achievement. This area is full of rare endgame materials, and I wanted to finish crafting my set of Durin's Guard armor, but I realized that I completely neglected repairing statues in Dwarodelf, so I completely skipped the tier 4 armor. Oops. So while I was at it, I crafted a full tier 4 Khazard armor set for an achievement I almost missed. And now finally, the Durin's Guard armor set was mine to craft. I found another forge to repair and relight named the Nogrod Forge. Here I could craft myself two tier 5 weapons which are also needed for an achievement. These weapons are the best you can make before you start mining Mithril, so I was really making some good progress. After creating this beast of an axe I was awarded the Dimril Weapon Craft achievement. Now the next item on my to-do list was to mine Mithril in the darkest depths, and getting down here into these chasms was tricky, and being here was absolutely terrifying. I won't spoil anything else, but you will need to venture into these hell pits for the rarest materials, like Mithril and Sunstone. My mission now was to craft a masterwork spear that can kill drakes, dragons and fell beasts with ease, and to slay the dragon that plagues Moria. I made my way to the final forge of the game, the Mithril Forge. Now it was time to craft this legendary spear and take on Narag Shazan. This was a pretty tough fight if you aren't geared properly, although you can return to your base between phases to repair, replenish and rebuff. There are three phases, firstly the hard part, facing off against countless orcs and fell beasts whilst baiting the dragon to destroy the pillars in the room. You can also destroy the pillars yourself to save time. The second phase is simply climbing up to Narag Shazan and fending off attacks from two fell beasts as you climb. Easy. Then the third and final phase is similar to phase one with the pillars, but there aren't pesky orcs trying to gut you this time. Once you destroy the pillars, the ceiling caves in and this she-dragon is blinded by the light, allowing you to attack her while she wildly flails and attacks in your general direction. After all this time by myself in Moria, I had finally succeeded in my mission, leaving the dragon to burn up in the daylight. I was awarded for my troubles with the Darkness is Passing achievement too. All that was left to do now was rebuild the Great Bridge of khazad which led to the Dimril Gate, my ticket out of Moria, and to allow Gimli's company outside a safe passage into Moria once again. We get a nice cutscene, celebrating with the dwarves and Gimli himself, and then we're being crowned the new Lord of Moria. Gimli then passes his company onto you, and we get a sweet monologue from him with many references to characters we know and love. I may not be here when Durin returns. I made promises, you see, to meet Aragorn, to Minas Tirith, see Merry and Pippin again, hmm. to make one final trip with Vagoras. After saying farewell, there isn't much else of an ending as of yet. I'm hoping they add NPC dwarves into Moria that wander around, rebuild bases, or help defend your bases from raids, but we never know in the future. I still had a few achievements to grab, but at the time of recording, there's a few I couldn't get solo or with the world generation luck, and there's definitely another one that no one else can get either, I checked online too, but I'll explain all that in a moment. For now, it was time to use the extra mithril I gained from the dragon to craft myself a full set of mithril armor, the best armor the game has to offer so far. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I did also miss a pop. I'd failed to record something. Uh, yeah. Rookie error, I know. For now, that's all achievements earned, and I'll quickly explain why. So, 
Crafting all chapter two weapons was definitely completed. I mean, that's easy. It just didn't pop, which is odd. Secondly, crafting all rare shields. I believe this is possible normally, but I need to open a chest with carvings and the area I need carvings from didn't spawn enough in my world. I found five carvings after searching for hours and I needed 12, so that's definitely an issue that needs to be addressed for solo players. And lastly, the 0.1% achievement is for crafting every brew. There seems to be one brew missing from the game at the moment, and I also couldn't get enough ranger's journal pages to spawn for brews also, which is another issue with a random generation on solo. All of these things will be fixed in the future though, and I may have to go and get this on PS5 and nab the platinum when I know everything is all fixed, so look out for that one in the future. As always, thanks for watching and making it to the end. Let me know in the comments if you're playing this game at the moment or are hoping to in the future. A special thanks to the NC Collective as always as well. Thanks so much for the continued support. Have a good one.